Um, <laughs> so, you know me and I remember, but I did have the beta bad endings and good endings going. I'm gonna continue the bad endings because, oh no, they're horrible, but, ah! So last time we chose a visit Hanako and she punched us in the chest and we died. Yeah, I know. This time we're gonna follow the doctor's orders. <laughs> Alright? Alright, I, I think we should wait for the doctor's approval. Lily's face drops in disappointment. I dare say mine did too. That is probably wise. Well, Hanako's doctor told me that he's known her since the fire. Can't imagine how he'd ask us to do something so drastic without reason. You are right, but he's how? It's difficult. I don't remember her voice again. <laughs> I can't imagine what it's like for her to be trapped. Alone. Oh, you'll find out. I know. I don't think I can stop myself either. I've been practicing getting up just in case. Well, I'm supposed to be doing a guy voice. He's out. That's dangerous. You should rest. Can't help but chuckle at Lily's concern. I guess you're right. Quicker, I'll let, I'll, where is the music? Is there no music? The, the quicker I get better, the quicker I can get out of here, right? Oh, wow. Jesus Christ. No, it's way too fast. Oh, Lily flashes a golden smile at me and almost instantly I feel relieved. I'll visit you every day, he's out. And I'll keep as much of an eye on Hanukkah as the doctors will let me. Once again, the mood in the room drops slightly as the temperature just dropped 10 degrees. Lily. Yes, he's out? I... I want to see her. Lily reaches out for my hand and I grasp it gently. So do I, but we must remember this is for her sake. You're right. I just hope that she's alright. <laughs> I'm sure she is. This is one of the best places for her right now. And as an added bonus, you, could, you two can now stay that you li say that you're living under the same roof. <laughs> I don't know, I'm sure she'll be pleased to hear, to hear that. <laughs> it's funny. It's time to for a food cart can be approaching the door. I guess I must take my leave now. Lily exits the room just as the nurse appears in the doorway. The nurse bows slightly to Lily who disappears beyond the door frame. That's the same girl as yesterday, isn't it? Well, we don't know if the nurse is a guy or a girl. So, I seem to do my regular voice. Yes, that's Lily. The nurse smiles a little. Isn't it nice that she visits every day? Comfort, comfort, that's for sure. The last time I was like this, people start visiting after about a week. Then this nod slowly in agreement. We see her all the time with patients your age. Once the hype of having a student in hospital wears off, no one comes to visit. It's heartbreaking, really. Though I think the students at your school are a little different. You've got that right. Well then, shall we start your dinner? Mm. Days become weeks, which finally become, became a month. True to her word, Lily visited every day. And every day the same news. They still won't let me see her. Each and every day, without fail, we're not allowed to see her. Then one Saturday. Well, I think you've heard enough. If it's all right with you, I'd like to schedule your surgery first thing Monday. The sooner the better, I feel so weak just laying here. It's not entirely true. With the help of the nurses and Lily, I've managed to start walking around quite comfortably. I like your spirit. Once you've recovered from the surgery, I think you'll find life a lot easier. Do my parents know yet? I was about to go and let them know. Would you like to speak to them? For a moment, my choice wavers. I think it'd better be better if you told them. I'll talk to them when they arrive. The doctor smiles knowingly. I understand. I'll call them now. I lie back on my bed, examining a ceiling far too familiar to me. The strange, yellow, yellowing stains are somewhere in the clouds. You spend hours tracing, chasing shapes in your mind with them. Also, attuning to other senses in a strange way. I swear I can hear at least came from further away each day. It's the cattle, okay, clicking, echoing down the hall into my room. He's how? Whoa, Lily! I have good news. I have good news. I have good news. We both chuckle slightly at our similar thoughts. You first. No, I mustn't this. Well, I saw the doctor this morning, and he said I'm good for surgery. That's wonderful. However, I think you'll be more pleased than my news. Through my eyes snap open, I sit poor <laughs> on a couch. Jesus Christ! You're not seriously. She's not allowed to be released just yet, but they allow me to see her. And how is she? Can I see her? She isn't the best of sorts. For a while, she thought that she had killed you, and it wasn't until after she had calmed down her mind that the doctors could speak to her, talk to her. She is still fairly medicated, and the doctors believe that contact with you should be limited until both of you are settled. But in an alternate universe, she totally didn't kill me. Thought of not being able to see Hanukkah for my surgery is gut wrenching. So, when will I see her next? As if she remains as she is for now, the next few days, as early as Wednesday, I said that wrong. I dance with Victor, I dance with my mind. I should always be ready to be discharged then. I'm very fortunate. I shall let Hanako know now. My heart skips a beat. Yup. Yeah. 
Going to see her now? Yes, I thought I would tell her that you're doing well. Wait, tell her! Damn it, I'm no good at this. But the best part of a month think of what to say yet when it comes to the country, I've got nothing. Tell her that I miss her and I can't wait to see her. You two are so alike. Huh? Lee stands up making ready to leave. At the door she turns back to face me. Hanako said exactly the same thing. As she walks down to the cor corridor, I feel a wave of joy overtaking my body. The simple fact that Hanako is sticking on me after all this time fills me with strange child like Lee. The stains on the ceiling now paint a different picture. What once was an angry dragon looks now looks like two kittens. Dang, I'm going insane just lying here. I get out of my bed and peer out the window. Hospital ground to suppress me. Patients in their pastel ground being led around by the usually overdressed visitors. Patients were half hearted smiles knowing that their time with their friends would be limited. The visitor visitors' smiles seem forced too, as if they have to put on a brave face for the patient. The veneer of happiness just seems so unnecessary. But today, things are different. Today, instead of false happiness, I see hope. I see people willing to take time out of their day to remind their friends that they are important to them. I see patients genuinely happy in the fact that they are still cared for. I see a reflection of a person desperately wanting to see someone. Oh, it's beautiful. That was beautiful. <laughs> To life that the town went out with the sound of dying electricity, a blackout caused by excessive snowfall. In a small two-bedroom house near the station, the quiet scratching of pencil on paper stopped. The shadowy figure responsible for the noise sighs, places the pencil on the paper, and then stands up. Carefully feeling her way around the house, she retrieves the item that she is looking for and, and breathes a sign of relief. The tiny spikes from the lighter light up the tiny kitchen like a strobe. Finally, the light manages to take a hold and a meager flame flickers at its mouth. The shadowed figure carefully lights two candles, then extinguishes the flame. In the weak yellow light of the candles, the figure resides into a young woman in casual clothes. Walking carefully, as do not spill too much wax, she returns to her study. The plants spread out on the table in the center of the room are once again visible, nothing more than a collection of lines on an otherwise blank sheet. The walls of the study are decorated with hand rendered drawings of various buildings, each accompanied by a photo. Against the far wall stand two deep chests full of hand drawn plans. The woman carefully places the candle on either side of the desk and picks up and picks up pencil once picks up her pencil once more. In a short time she is once again working at full pace, the scratching of the pencil nearly matching the flickering lights from the candles. And as the woman continues, drawing away into the night, before long, the lines on the paper are connecting, forming the outline of a house. A new house. She bears her head deeper into the plans, making the most of the weak candlelight. She is so engrossed in the work that she doesn't hear the soft sobbing and patting her feet till the owners wrap its arms around her legs. Mommy? Oh no, I know what this is. The woman looks down startled. Her daughter, her daughter in her flannel pajamas is carrying her favorite plush rabbit. His roots firmly around her leg, crying. It's all dark, mommy. The woman puts down her pencil and picks up her daughter, placing her on her lap. Shh, now, Hana chan. Oh, Jesus. What's the matter? I can't do a girl voice. It's dark and I can't sleep. Where are the lights, mommy? The woman gently strokes the daughter's head before gently kissing the top of her head. Come on now, I'll fix that for you. The woman picks up one of the candles, now covered in the hardened rivulets of wax, and helps the daughter stand up. What is this song? Painful history. Oh no. The daughter stumbles slightly and bumps the desk, but neither of them notices beyond that. Hand in hand, they walk into the next room, where a man lay sleeping on the edge of a double futon. Next to him lay another two pillows. The small family always sleeps together. The woman guides the daughter into the futon next to the sleeping man and places the candle at the head of the futon. Futon, I don't know how to say that. There, you see? Now there's light here. The man stirs into consciousness. Eh, what's going on here? There was just a little blackout and a nightlight went out. I brought a candle for Hanako to get to sleep by. The man smiles slightly and wraps an arm around his daughter. Don't you have a great mother, Hanako? Say thank you. F thank you, mommy. The daughter, daughter hugs her plush rabbit tightly as her mother smiles and leaves the bedroom. As she slides to the door to the bedroom clothes, she hears a strange sound. Smells a strange sound, and realizes that the corridor is much brighter than it ought to be. 
Oh no, she gasps, gasps and rushes to the next room. She tries to enter the blazing room but the intense heat drives her back. Her desk is collapsed into a pile of burning firewood, the floor around it blackened by the smoke. The drawings on the wall curl away and disintegrate as they burn. Smoke billows from the cracks in the drawings, in the drawings chest and puffs as the smoldering fire inside them draws air through the same cracks to survive. Flames leap across the ceiling in mesmerizing patterns. The woman, too shocked to scream, falls over backwards, backwards and can do nothing but sit and stare as her livelihood is consumed by the flames. A picture flame, ablaze and losing its integrity, smashes to the floor. The noise rouses the sleeping man who enters the corridor. What's going on? Oh my god. As the pair stare into the inferno, the wall separating the study and the bedroom buckles and falls. Hanako! The woman tries to get to her feet but slips. The man, already standing, makes for the bedroom. He opens the door, providing a second supply of air for the flames. In an instant, they increase their brightness and intensity and shimmering waves of heat separate the man and his daughter. Their eyes meet, and the man must know what he, the man knows what he must do. Using his arms as a shield from the flames, he charges towards his daughter, scooping her up into his chest. She, she screams an airless scream, but is lost to the ever-increasing roar of the fire. Even as he barrels through the short hallway to the house's front door, he feels the flames sticking against his body, instantly blistering skin and vaporizing hair. As he fumbles with the lock, he feels the heat of the fire upon his back, and hears the structure of the house slowly start to crumble. Opening the door seems to take an eternity, and as soon as he has it open, a fraction, the back draft of air slams a slab of wood into him and his daughter, sending him flying. Enraged by the fresh air outside, the fire screams and reaches out towards his flesh-based enemy. Clawing his protesting body along the floor, breathing in lungfuls of smoke, the man makes his way towards his daughter. She is curled tightly around her plush rabbit, her flannel pajamas blackened and covered in glowing trails of smoldering fire. Her skin is lost among, amongst the ashes of her clothes, as charred as the walls around her. The man summons the last of his strength and shoves the girl outside through the door and onto the pristine white snow outside. He hears the hiss of the melting snow turning into steam at the door, but he can see that his daughter is now safe from the flames. She stirs and turns towards him, her tiny hand pushing through the snow towards him. He smiles lightly as the walls finally buckle, sending the roof crashing down around him. Oh my god. Even though I've seen that twice before, it's still sad. Oh my god. Oh, that... That is just... That is just depressing. Are you awake as hell? My groggy brain, brain floats back into consciousness and I slowly become aware of my surroundings once again. A dull, pulsing pain emanates from my chest. Fuzzy shapes, fuzzy, fuzzy shapes resolve themselves into the faces of my parents and my doctor. Huh? Looks like you made it through okay then. Made it through what? It's alright, you're probably still confused from the anesthetic. Minor confusion is coming in with long procedures like this. Start to look from, to my, from side to side, confirming that I am in the post-operation room. My pacemaker? Is working fine. I'm pleased to say that everything was a success. Memories start to trickle back into my mind. My parents' arrival at the hospital. The doctor explaining to all of us exactly what was going to happen. Her, her girl wishing me well to Lily. Not eating for a day before the surgery. So how are you feeling? Hungry. Doctor laughs a little. Well then, let's get you some food, shall we? Nurse, could you please take Hassel here back to his room? The nurse nods and summons some orderlies to warm my bed back to my room. As I watch the fluorescent lights whiz by overhead, I ask my I that's all typo. I ask my parents a question. How long before they'll let me out? Well they wanted to keep you overnight to make sure you were fine, but you should be fine to go tomorrow. Tomorrow. The thought of being able to leave sets me ablaze. Finally, I'll be free. And how long are you up here for? Unfortunately I've just returned to work on Thursday, so I'll have to leave tomorrow. Feel a twinge of regret. Not the fact that you're leaving me, but that is not sooner. Has living away from home really changed me this much? We arrive in my room where the nurse already has a tray of food waiting for me. There's another thing that I can't get away from. Hospital food. Seventeen specifically designed menus that will cater to your body's needs without so much as dis distur so much as disturb without so much as disturbing your sense of taste. Yes, seventeen. I've been counting. If I'm not mistaken, today is pale brown stew with bits of carrots. 
bummer. I really could have done with some fixed weight sauce and chicken. <laughs> no matter, I wolfed down the food with vigor. Wow, you really were hungry. I haven't eaten in over a day. Oh yeah, that. So how are you feeling? Alright, I guess. My chest hurts a bit, but apart from that, that'll probably get worse as the painkillers are well off. I remember having my appendix out. I thought I was fine for the first hour, and then BAM! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's how it felt like too, man. I c yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, I, rem I know your pain. That hurt a lot. I could barely stand up. Once again, I remembered of how little I have in common with my parents now. We continue to trade small talk until a passing nurse reminds us of the end of visiting hours. Well, we'll be off now. Take care, love. I will. That, that was the mom. I'm stupid. I will. Thanks for coming up. It means a lot. My parents give me the standard hospital smile and then leave for their hotel. As soon as they are out of sight, I unbutton my gown slowly, slightly to inspect my throbbing chest. A bright red scar bisects my newly healed ribcage bound together by a number of stitches. There's a little bruising where he must have moved my ribs around, but it's nothing compared to the damage that Hanako got on me. Hanako. Now that I'm better, it's only a matter, day, matter of days before I'm allowed to see her. I wonder if she's changed. Lily mentioned that she wasn't quite herself, but I can't really believe that. Or is it that I don't want to believe that? I flop back onto my familiar bed, once again greeted by my roof stains. Still feeling the effects of the anesthetics, I blink twice and fall asleep. Come on now, no need to sleep in this late. My doctor wakes me on his morning on his morning rounds for my checkup. Hey, we're about to practice some regular music. What's the bad news? The doctor flips through my charts and touches a few times. Well, it looks like you might be a, we might be able to get you some fresh air after all. I can feel the smile creep across my face. Does that mean? Well, your vitals are fine and you've passed all the post-op checks. We can remove your stitches as an outpatient, and let's face it, you've taken up a valuable bed for <laughs> far too long. He gives me a cheeky smile and places my charts back in the holder at the end of my bed. I just go clear this with the chief of medicine and start to discharge paperwork. You guys my shoulder in a friendly manner. You're a tough kid. You'll do fine. Mark my words. He gives me a weird stirring shake and hands out the door. I can't believe, I can believe hardly that I'm about to go home. Well, back to school at least. I know full well what awaits me there too. My teachers made it blatantly obvious that as soon as I was well that I have to sit my tests. Although they have afforded me a week of study to prepare, I guess they're used to this kind of thing. The doctor doesn't take long in returning to me. Well, the chief isn't totally happy about letting you go right now, but at least you're close by. And we've briefed the nurse at your school about looking out for you. You can promise to report him twice daily for the first week. I think we can let you go. If it means I'm finally going home, I think I jumped through flaming hoops. Sounds good to me. But there's just one last thing before I can let you go. What? I'll do anything! The doctor smirks. You have a visitor. The doctor walks out of the door and talks to someone just out of you. Takes a step back and motions to let someone into the room. Feels like my heart stops. It's Hanukkah, and her son just again, which is a new addition to the beta, because she doesn't wear this, the only thing she wears is her school uniform and her casual clothing. But yay, we finally got to the part. A fragile figure appears in the doorway, her hands clamped together near her waist, her head cowed. Take a small step, she walks towards my bed. Hanako, my voice is barely a whisper as I call her name. I throw back my bed sheets and leap to my feet, ignoring the ache in my chest. Hanako, it's really you, isn't it? I can hold back no longer. I race across the room and gather Hanako's fame in my arms, embracing her in a hug that threatens to reopen my scar. Hanako, I've missed you so much, but Jesus Christ, man. Don't reopen the scar. How are you? You look thinner. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, hello. Hi. I release Hanako and hold her at arm's length. Hanako, is something the matter? Slowly and purposefully, purposefully Hanako raises her head to look me in the eye. Only now do I notice that she's wearing the same clothes as she wore on that fateful day. Only do I realize that she looks as, as if she hasn't eaten in a week. Only now do I realize that her hair is unkept, her usually perfect fringe hanging in tatters over her face. Only now do I see her eyes, distant and empty. He's out. You're alright. Her words are forced, forced, her voice deadpan. Just what is going on here? Hanako, what's the matter? Please, what's going on? Well, I suppose you know now, don't you? They told me they told you everything. So, I suppose that means you know everything. Hanako talks in a mo monotonous voice, gaze gazing lazily at my face. 
Hanako, what's going on here? What did they do to you? Oh, don't mind me. I'm just tired. They're trying a new medication on me, and for some reason, I'm always tired. I can barely believe the sight before my eyes. Hanako is a shadow of a former self. Once again, I pull Hanako into my embrace. That's okay. You can be tired as long as you want. I'm free now, so I won't ever leave you again. Those words act like some trigger, and Hanako gently wraps her arms around my body. I'm free too. So long as I take my medication. Ruru sounds like they've been drilled into her head. From the corridor, I hear a familiar noise. Lily? Oh, Lily's here. Wait a second. Yeah, I saw that. Oh, never mind. Oh, no, okay, never mind. Hey, we united at last! My, my, I didn't expect you to get here so soon, Hanako. I take it that Hanako told you the good news, you saw? Yes, I just heard now. And I get discharged today, so we get to go home together. You make it sound coincidental, you saw. However, Hanako insisted that she was to stay in the hospital as long as you did, because she wanted to go home with you. I look back at Hanako who nod, nod slightly. I thought that I should at least do that much. I really can't put my voice low. I mean, high. God dang it. You came here because of me. No, don't be silly. From what I heard, the only reason I'm alive is because of you. But I made you ch chase me. It's my fault. Squeeze Hanako of my, squeeze Hanako of my whole body and feel the wound in my chest protest against the movement. Don't be silly. None of this is your fault. Hanako is the, um, not Hanako. He sounds like the true MVP. He is totally the master of romance. I don't care. He is the true MVP. Now, I'll just get dressed and we'll be off. Uh, wait a second. True to my word, I get dressed and meet the girls in the hallway. There, I find I'm talking to my parents and my doctor. All set? Yes. Um, mom, dad, this is... My dad gives me a thump on the back. Lily here explained everything to us. This is the girl that saved you, right? And now we finally met her. I looked down at Hanako, sitting in one of the seats in the corridor. Despite my father's energetic reaction, she simply sits there, her gaze downcast. Come on, I'll give you all a lift back to the school. I've already signed all the papers that we need to, so you're good to go. Like an excited sheepdog, my father hurls us all into the waiting hire car in the hospital's car park. I take one last look at the hospital, trying to search out my window. I haven't seen it from the outside, but it's just like every other hospital. Sorry, I went to go eat. Food. Get that out of the way. Anyway. Banks upon banks of bleak windows set into a gray concrete building. What just happened to my mouth? Uh oh. Uh, technical difficulties. There we go. There we go. How long will it be before I am caught back here in yet another ambulance? Sensing my thoughts, my father pushes me into the waiting back seat of the car. Come on, you just spent a month here. Do you really need to look at it anymore? You're right. Let's go. The car's engines roar into life, and I slowly watch the hospital disappear into the distance. Ah, oh, god dang it. Ah. Oh, yeah, I got that out the way. The car's engine roars into life, and I slowly watch the hospital disappear into the distance. My hand gently wrapped around the Hanukkah. Oh, god dang it. The car's engine. Uh, all right, all right. I'm done with like, the uh, stopping. I hope. My parents seem to take forever to leave, fussing over me at every step. <coughs> Go Jesus. Hanako barely says a word, despite my father's bet, bets, bet attempts at great goading her on. But unlike her usual self, she didn't flinch nor retreat. She just sat there, slowly sipping her drink, while my parents fussed over her. Lily also attracted a fail, uh, also attracted a fair deal of attention, especially when she told, accidentally told them that she visited me every day. Of course, she responded in the most refined manner, which impressed my parents to no end. She even bowed to them as they drove off in the higher car. Thankfully, she never mentioned her parents, otherwise I'd never hear the end of it. I can imagine my parents trying to arrange a marriage after hearing something, <laughs> after hearing something like that. They guess Lily... Together, Lily and I put Hanako to bed, who seems barely interested in either of us, and falls straight asleep. Uh, wait a second. So, yeah, I'm just gonna end this here, for now, this episode. So, yeah, boy.